This is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio. Just a quick um, update on my Lowrider 3 build progress. And I wanted to mention a couple of things. One is that putting in, putting in these screws without shoving out the nuts that are behind them can be a challenge. And so eventually what I did uh, in order to gain access, because I had already cut this uh, strut out of uh, hardboard and painted it black and had already installed it, it made it a little bit difficult to access things behind to keep those nuts in place while trying to screw in from the front. So as a sacrifice, what I did was I cut out a little notch here so that when the carriage is brought over and lined up with it, I could reach in from behind and get access to that nut. A couple of other tidbits. Uh, one is that the, the tensioner for the X belt, I like so much better than the way that the X belt was done on Lowrider 2. I do wanna mention a couple of caveats on that. One is that um, where the belt mounts on whichever end you have um, this stud, assuming that you're using a milled, a milled XZ plate, I am using a laser cut aluminum plate that you can purchase from V1 Engineering Shop, and it's great. Um, but whichever end you're putting the opposite of the tensioner, the two studs are different. The stud on this side has a slot to hold the belt, and the stud on the other side has a screw hole for mounting this tensioner to. So here's the thing. This stud that has the slot that matches up with the slot in the aluminum, the milled aluminum XZ plate. The slot is, and of course it's gonna depend on your 3D printer, but many people, and I'm like everybody else, when I do 3D prints, sometimes that first layer has a little too much squish, it gives you what they call elephant's foot, and that just about pert near closes off that slot where the belt is supposed to go. And even if you don't have elephant's foot, it's the slot is really, really tiny and hard to get the belt through. So what I advise is before you mount this stud, when you've still got it loose and you've still got access to it, put your belt into it, and then you can mount it carefully even with the belt already in it. But notice that you'll have to put this stud in from this side after you've run the belt in through the milled aluminum or in through your plate. So you'll have to feed the belt in. I recommend doing, doing the belt here, taking care of all of this first, then bring the belt down and run it through the carriage, run it through the X motor mount here, and then carry it from there over and do this last. And um, this is pretty easy to get to. You can just flip your whole, your whole operation, flip it forward so that you're getting to the back and then bring it through and then flip it back up to push it back through and then flip it forward again to get to the back to route, uh, to route the, the belt on the other way. So when you're doing this, it's a little bit fiddly. You'll put the belt through, through the milled aluminum plate or um, presuming, presumably uh, a milled aluminum plate, and then you'll pull it through. And as you pull it through, you've got this piece needing to come down and get seated come through here and drop down as you're pulling 
and right at the last, the belt will bind up on itself a little bit and the teeth can interlock as they face each other. And so it's a little bit fiddly. You kind of have to keep pulling this part forward to keep the belt from binding up on itself. And finally, you'll be able to pull the belt through and seat this down in position. Another thing to be careful about is that it's a clever design, but there is an angle on the stud that matches with the angle on the XZ plate. And you really want that angle lined up. And so uh, if you would Google winding sticks and watch a short video about winding sticks. But the idea is that you get on, you get right on the angle and you bring it down until things are just disappearing and you can see whether or not you are on the right angle. And why it matters so much is that if this thing is turned wrong up here, then it will make the uh, lead screw be twisted at an angle so it will no longer be parallel to these screw holes, thus no longer parallel to your linear rods that are on the other side and it monkeys everything up. And so uh, another thing to watch for is that when you bring your uh, beam up and it's causing this nut to spiral its way up this screw, then when you get up to the top, you can look at how much of a gap you have between the screw and the YZ plate then drop your beam and, and carriage and all down and watch the gap. And if you see that gap start opening up or closing up, it means that as the nut is getting closer to the coupler, that your lead screw is out of alignment and it's not meeting the, the coupler at the right place. And so as it gets down, it's wanting to either push the screw out one way or push it out another way because it's getting pinched down against the coupler. And uh, by the way, Ryan from V1 Engineering recommends that this kind of coupler not be used. Um, he recommends that the, the spiral cut kind that can allow uh, the lead screw to go one way or the other be used. So I may yet still swap out what coupler I'm using uh, to uh, based on his recommendation. But um, if if the top of this rod is, as you move the carriage down, if the top of this rod begins to get closer to the YZ plate, um, then that means at the bottom, your nut is trying to push a, a lead screw that is too far out up against the coupler. And so what you would actually have to do then is remix the stud and make it ever so slightly a different length. Um, I want to think to make sure I'm telling you right. When this is going this way, it means that the bottom is, I told you wrong a moment ago. When this is going this way, it means that the bottom, that the stud is too short, uh, that something is out of alignment and the lead screw is actually meeting the coupler too far that way. And then if the top of it, as the carriage go down, if the top of it kicks out this way, it means the opposite. Hopefully you will not have alignment issues like I did. Uh, I had god awful alignment issues and that was in spite of working very carefully to be very precise with everything. And so, um, I was able to correct it by making super minor tweaks uh, in remixes to the stud and reprinting them. On one side, my stud had to be printed at 0 0.15 millimeters longer than original. And on the other side, it had to be reprinted at 0 0.25 millimeters longer than original. And only by doing that was I finally able to get around whatever the alignment issue was. So um, my lead screws are, uh, my linear rods are parallel and the, the bearing 
shuttle slide on them uh, with the whole carriage, just like Greased Lightning. And then when I put the lead screw into the mix, it thickens everything up and slows everything down uh, somewhat. But I'm, I'm pleased now with the alignment that I have on my lead screw as far as being parallel to my linear rods and lined up properly with my coupler. Um, one last thing to mention is that this is my Remix um, dust shoe that allows a two and a half inch um, uh, dust collection hose. And I designed it for a VAC Master two and a half inch hose and it fits wonderfully. It seats down with a nice uh, click and seats in really well. The other thing to mention is that it really takes to the limit how far this way something can stand off of this carriage without running into a process here. And that leads me to this wonderful little thing here, the tensioner. It has a 3D printed hole in the bottom of it and that's where you put a screw and that screw then becomes the surface that your end stop bumps against. And so as I slide over, get this hose out of the way, as I slide the carriage over, you'll see my end stop will click, click, and I'm not running into anything. I have daylight here. So you want that click, you want that end stop click to happen before anything hits down here. All right, again, this is Doug Joseph with Design It Studio. I'm posting from time to time updates on my Lowrider 3 build. And if you want more information like this, please click like and subscribe. And that helps the, not only helps you to get notifications when new videos are published, but also helps the, with the YouTube algorithm to get the information out to other like-minded people. God bless you. Have a great day.